Hello everyone. Uh, in this session, we will look at SAP UI5 adaptation uh, in from the perspective of uh, SAP Fiori Elements application. Uh, for the most part, all of the apps, or most of the apps at least, of in SAP S4 HANA is based on the SAP Fiori Elements approach. Uh, so when you're doing the adaptation projects, uh, more than likely, uh, this is the approach that you would be taking. Uh, in a previous session, I had talked about uh, SAP UI5 adaptation projects uh, from a freestyle approach. Uh, perspective. Uh, so if you haven't watched that, uh, definitely go ahead and watch that. Uh, that is uh, some of the basics uh, apply for the SAP Fiori Elements approach as well. Uh, so I talked about the SAP UI5 lifecycle hooks. Uh, so we found that the uh, base application or the owner of the methods, uh, they control the override execution strategy. Uh, so in our case, uh, these uh, lifecycle methods of SAP UI5 applications, uh, they are owned by the SAP UI5 core team. Uh, so unless they change it, uh, this is going to be the behavior of the uh, lifecycle hooks. Uh, so I had mentioned the, the sequence in which uh, these uh, lifecycle hooks are uh, are executed. Uh, so if you haven't watched uh, the previous video, definitely watch that. Uh, so this is the execu uh, this is the strategy. Uh, so the base application runs first for the on in it, and then the extension uh, runs after. So this is uh, from the perspective of the extension application so that runs after and then the on before uh, rendering uh, the uh, extension app runs first and then the base application runs uh, second and so on uh, so again like I mentioned uh, these lifecycle hooks are owned by the SAP UI5 core uh, so you cannot change the execution strategy uh, so the base application the owner of the methods uh, they control how the execution strategy or like uh, works now, we also noticed uh, that in the Fiori freestyle application, uh, the public methods, uh, it depends on the metadata section uh, in the app. Uh, so if there is no metadata section, uh, then any method that does not start with underscore on in it or exit, uh, they are considered as a public method. And the default execution strategy is instead. Uh, so in this case, there is no metadata section because uh, we this is the category that we are looking at. And uh, the extension applications, what they can do uh, is they can simply redefine the method with the same name uh, in the override section uh, if they want to have their own implementation, right? Uh, so uh, if there is no metadata section, uh, anything that is named differently than this uh, is considered a public method. Uh, but if a metadata section exists, uh, then uh, even if uh, the metadata section only contains zero methods, uh, so here is a metadata section with uh, absolutely no methods inside of it, uh, then the behavior changes. So I don't know if this is a bug or not. Uh, so anything that it does not start with the underscore is a public method. Uh, so everything else is a public method. Uh, and the default strategy, so all these uh, are the same. The default strategy is instead, uh, you can override the execution strategy here in this uh, metadata section if you want. Uh, and from the extension application, uh, all you have to do is, uh, yeah, you have to provide it with the same name in the override section uh, if you want to have your own implementation. So we looked at all this uh, in the session with uh, uh, SAP UI5 adaptation or when you're adapting uh, freestyle applications. Uh, now, base application, so private methods, uh, so again, it depends on the name of the method and also depends if the base application or the owner of the methods has implemented a metadata section or not. Uh, so it's a kind of uh, the previ the same slide, uh, but from the private uh, methods perspective. Uh, so extension application in general, uh, you should not be trying to override or extend the private methods, uh, but there would be use cases where you do have to extend the private methods. Say, for example, you have a sub submit button and you want to validate something before you hit the submit button. Uh, so in this case, uh, you are going to be extending the uh, extension application. Uh, so here, uh, what we want to do is we want to do like a duplicate code from the base application and uh, and you have to do the prototype approach as well. Uh, so there are a couple of ways in which you can do. Uh, both of them are hacks, and uh, we don't really want to do this uh, the, this way, uh, but there is no real uh, good way to extend a private method. Uh, so in this case, uh, you are going to be duplicating code from the base application, uh, but the problem here is the base application has a minified code. Uh, so therefore, uh, we don't, uh, so yeah, so then you don't have the proper code 
to copy. And also the context of uh, this is uh, different in your extension application as well. So I showed uh, uh, these two approaches uh, in the uh, SAP UI5 uh, custom uh, freestyle applications. Uh, so from the Fiori elements, uh, so this doesn't change uh, at all. Uh, so the sequence in which the on in it, on before rendering, on after rendering, they all run. Uh, they are the same. Uh, so there is uh, no difference uh, in the sequence. Uh, so they behave the same here. Uh, now in the Fiori elements, uh, when it comes to public methods, uh, we have uh, the controller framework extensions. Uh, so even if your base application doesn't have any methods, uh, you still get all these uh, public methods for free uh, from the SAP UI5 core team. Uh, so let's have a look at it, right? Uh, so here I have a base application and this uh, base application uh, does not, uh, let's say here is my base application here. Uh, this is a base uh, Fiori elements application. Uh, you have the customary lifecycle hooks, the on in it, on before, on after, on an exit and so on. And then I have my um, I have my extension application as well. Uh, so this also has the on in it, uh, on before rendering and so on. So in my on in it, uh, I want to see all the public methods that are available. Uh, so here in my extension application, what I'm doing is uh, I'm using the get met, uh, metadata and I'm getting all the public methods. So if I run this here, uh, so I have. Uh, a list of uh, public methods that are available to me, uh, courtesy of the SAP UI5 core team. Uh, so I have uh, all these uh, controller framework extensions and I can hook into any of them if I want to. Uh, so here, uh, what I have done, I have uh, this uh, uh, application right here and you can see in my public methods right here, I have about 23 methods uh, that are available in my public method right here. Now you can see that there is a method called on before rebind table extension, right? So on before rebind table extension. Uh, this uh, event gets uh, triggered when you click on this uh, go button. Uh, so what I can do is in my extension app, uh, I can simply put it inside the override section. So inside the override section, I have uh, the on before rebind table extension. So I have uh, this method right here. And I have the same method uh, in my base app application as well. So in my base application as well, I have the on before rebind table extension. Uh, so let's uh, see the sequence in which it gets run. Uh, so if I go ahead and clear this uh, console log and if I hit uh, go, uh, you will notice that the base uh, on before table rebind extension gets fired first and then the extension. Uh, so the uh, uh, the strategy is the execution strategy is after. Uh, again, this cannot be changed uh, because uh, this is uh, the owner of the methods can change it, uh, and the owner of this uh, these methods uh, is the SAP UI5 core. Uh, and all you have to do is uh, if you want to redefine the method, uh, then simply in your override section in your extension application, uh, do something like this, and uh, this is uh, going to run after uh, the base if the base application has something in the on before uh, rebind, then the base application runs first and then the extension application runs uh, next. Same thing with on save style extension as well. Uh, so here again, I have uh, the on save uh, style. So you click on it and you can see that the base runs first and the extension runs uh, next. Uh, so these uh, methods, uh, these uh, controller framework extensions, uh, the execution strategy is after and uh, yeah, in order for you to extend it in your extension applications, uh, simply uh, put it inside the overrides uh, section. Uh, so the next thing you can also do with the, uh, so the controller framework extension itself, a little bit of uh, uh, background on the controller framework extensions. Uh, what it allows you to do as a developer is to inject custom code at predefined lifecycle events. Uh, so here at predefined lifecycle events, uh, we are able to inject code and it provides a light way to extend the behavior of for standard list report or object page templates. Okay, so one thing I forgot to mention is uh, uh, these methods are specific to list report. Uh, if you want to find the methods for uh, uh, the object page, uh, then you would look at the object page controller framework extensions. So they are going to be different. And then of course, for the analytical list page, uh, that's going to be different as well. Okay, so now 
Uh, now that we've looked at the controller framework extensions, uh, there is also the template-based extensions. Again, uh, this is uh, specific for, uh, for list report. You will have a different list of uh, methods uh, that you can use for, uh, that you can use for uh, object page and so on. Uh, so in this case, uh, what you can do is extension applications, they can consume these methods uh, by overriding the template-based extension. And the way you can get these, uh, the list of methods uh, is uh, by using the uh, method right here, this dot base dot template base extension, and this will give you all the uh, methods that are available for. If it is a list report, then this is uh, going to be a list report. Um, if you're going to do it in an object page controller, uh, then this will give you the methods for the object page. Uh, so here again, uh, overriding is fairly straightforward. Uh, you say overrides, you say template base extension, and then you add some filters. So in this uh, case, uh, so if I go into my extension application right here, uh, what I can do is uh, I can go ahead and add this uh, add filters because I know this is part of the uh, list report. And and basically what I'm doing is I'm adding a new filter uh, that, uh, that uh, filters out uh, just the USA uh, uh, entries. Again, this is not something what you would do. Uh, you may add like a custom filter and then add these methods. Uh, but in this case, just I'm showing you how you can do this. Uh, so here uh, you can see that when I hit go, uh, I only get a uh, uh, country that is the USA. So you can see the country is only USA. Uh, and that's because I have uh, uh, used the uh, uh, template based extensions. Now, uh, Along with this, so we've looked at uh, controller framework extensions. Uh, we've also looked at uh, template-based extensions. Uh, so these are all uh, available only for the Fiori Elements app. Uh, so this is not available in these uh, in the uh, freestyle applications. These are all uh, SAP UI5 core team uh, that has uh, developed this. Uh, you get this automatically, right? Uh, in addition, uh, you can also use the extension API. Uh, so the extension API, uh, this is like a rich set of utility methods to interact with list report and object page components, models, and actions. Uh, so basically, it's a way for developers to programmatically interact with the UI or uh, trigger uh, some framework-specific behaviors, right? Uh, so here, uh, this is uh, my uh, API that is available for list report. Uh, you can access this uh, with this uh, uh this line right here, template base extension. Uh, you don't want to instantiate this yourself. Uh, so let's say you want to refresh the table. So in my application right here, uh, if I want to go ahead and refresh this table, uh, so I have this extension button that I have added right here in my extension application. Uh, so in my extension application, I'm running this line right here uh, to refresh uh, the table, to go to the back end and get the data and refresh it. Uh, so if I go here and clear all the logs, uh, let me go to the network tab also, clear everything in the log. And if I hit this extension button, uh, what it's going to do is it's going to call this uh, extension API and make a call to the backend. So it is able to, okay, at least, but you saw that it's uh, making a call the batch call, uh, but it uh, did fail, uh, but it's uh, supposed to go and get some data uh, from the backend. Uh, so, uh, so it's uh, going to go ahead and make a call to the backend and get the data. So I think uh, I got disconnected. Uh, so, uh, uh, there are some network issues and that's why uh, I'm not able to go get the data, but you get the gist of it. Okay, so now, uh, now that we have uh, these uh, uh, extension applications, uh, these uh, extension APIs, uh, let's uh, have a look at uh, the uh, an actual application itself. Uh, so here I'm looking at a screen maintenance request app. Uh, so I mentioned in the previous uh, session, uh, what you really want to do is you want to go into SAP logon, uh, go into the transaction code SE80. So I went into transaction code SE80, uh, select a BSP application and put in the uh, ID of your application. So you can get this from the SAP Fiori Elements app. Uh, so in the SAP Fiori Elements app, if you search for screen maintenance request, uh, in the configuration section, you can get the name of the app. Uh, go ahead and put it uh, here. Now you will get the code. Now, now we are lucky here in the sense that uh, the code here uh, is uh, not minified. So typically you will only see minified version of the code. Uh, in this case, uh, it is 
not minified. Uh, I wish all the code was uh, in the non-minified version because then it makes uh, life easier. Uh, so now what you can do is uh, just copy this uh, just to have a, an idea of how the application behaves itself. Uh, and go ahead and put it like in your thing right here and you can um, just look at the code itself. So this is the base application. Actually, I say this is the base application, but if you look at the file name itself, uh, it says list report controller extension.js. So basically this screen maintenance app is itself an extension app. Uh, so you can see that uh, there is a, a manifest app descriptor variant. Uh, so basically what it's uh, doing is uh, there is uh, another app uh, that it is extending from. Uh, so, so you can see uh, that uh, this uh, screen maintenance, uh, this Fury Elements app, uh, is actually extending from a different app. And if you go in here to the list report controller dot extension js, uh, you can see that it is uh, doing from the controller extension here. So it's basically extending a, a base application already. Okay, so now that we have that in mind, uh, we can look at uh, that it's uh, also doing some kind of uh, override. So typically what you would do in, in the extension applications, uh, it's overriding the uh, ensure fields for select. Uh, there is uh, the on in it and so on. Uh, and also extending the uh, modify startup extensions as well. Okay, so what you can do now is uh, if you can go in here uh, and let me go do this um, if this works. And yeah, so then what you can do is uh, open up the app itself. Uh, and uh, so I have an extension app already. Oh, it stopped. Uh, so I can, let me wait for this to start. Okay, so the dev space has now started. Uh, that explains why the batch request uh, failed. Uh, but now I can open up uh, the business application studio. Uh, I already have an extension application for the screen maintenance request app. Uh, so let me go ahead and open that up. Uh, and here, uh, what I want to do is uh, I want to do some validation before the save. Uh, so uh, very simple uh, before save extension. So before I click the save button, I do want to call this. And from what we have uh, seen, uh, so this actually gets gets uh, called after uh, the base application, or uh, yeah, uh I don't know, yeah, is it after, yeah, some, yeah, so there's the execution strategy is not something we can, um, or we can control. Um, okay, uh, so what we can do is uh, we can open up a new terminal, uh, then we can do npm run start. And uh, this is uh, going to open up uh, the, um, uh, the extension application. Uh, so once the extension application uh, runs, uh, I do need to go to the details page uh, because this controller that I'm targeting is in the details page. Uh, so the examples that I showed in the slide deck, uh, they were all in the list report, uh, but this one is actually on the details page. Uh, so I can go ahead and uh, go into the, uh, uh, I can go into uh, the, uh, developer, uh, I, let me go into the developer tools here. Uh, so I go into the developer tools. Uh, I select this uh, row uh, and let me go into console. Uh, let me go ahead and cancel this. Uh, so I'm going to go into the uh, edit mode as well. And then in the edit mode, uh, when I hit uh, save, uh, my before save extension should get fired. Uh, so you can see that my uh, before save extension got fired. You can see that uh, this thing is right here. And then the actual uh, save itself happens. Okay, so that's uh, how you would uh, uh, extend uh, with the SAP Fiori Elements application. Thank you.